Okay, so uh, this time of year is my least favorite time of the year as an astronomer because what I'm doing at the moment is I'm buried under a huge pile of exam scripts, um, which is going to take up my life for the next week or so. Um, but something sufficiently interesting is going on in astronomy that I managed to drag myself away long enough uh, to actually find out what the story is and uh, come up to speed on what's going on in astronomy. So it's the Andromeda Galaxy, M31, which uh, is a galaxy I've studied at at some length, and one of the things that's sort of fairly well known about the Andromeda Galaxy is it's coming towards us. It's actually blue shifted. If you measure the Doppler shift in its spectral lines, they're blue shifted, which means the whole thing's piling towards us. And that's because although the universe overall is expanding, some places sort of locally gravity's won out over that expansion. And so within our local group, that's exactly what's happening. And Andromeda is being pulled and the Milky Way are being pulled together by the mutual gravity. And so one obvious likely conclusion of that is that these two are going to crash into each other. The, the sort of unknown in this has been, okay, so we can measure the line of sight motion of the Andromeda galaxy quite easily through the Doppler shift, but its transverse motion, its motion on the plane of the sky, is very much harder to measure because you don't get a Doppler shift from transverse motions. And so it's possible that although it has some, a component of velocity towards us, it could have other components in other directions, which means actually it's going to miss us. It's not actually coming straight at us. So the new measurement that's just been made with the Hubble Space Telescope is measuring that, what astronomers refer to as proper motion, that motion on the plane of the sky. And they found essentially it's very small, which means that it really is coming straight at us. And so in about four billion years time, it's going to hit us. Considering the Milky Way is the only other really, really big galaxy in the neighborhood, wouldn't it have been in a pretty obvious assumption that it's being attracted towards us? It could be, I mean, there are lots of other ways that it could have acquired sort of torques in other directions. So it could, we could have ended up on a reasonably stable orbit around one another for a long period of time rather than actually smashing straight into each other. And of course, actually, the, the, what complicates the issue is there's M33, another of the, the galaxies in the local group, which is also going to get in on the act. So one of the things that these astronomers have done is some simulations to say what the sequence of events is likely to be. And it's quite likely that as well as uh, M31 and the Milky Way smashing together, M33 is going to get in on the act and merge as well. The reason why it's hard to measure is that galaxies, although they're very big, are a very long way away, which means that even if they have quite large velocities transverse to the line of sight, they actually move quite slowly across the background of whatever else is further away. So it's just like an aeroplane, you know, when, which are traveling you know, at pretty high speeds, but when you actually see them in the distant sky, they appear to be moving quite slowly because they're a long way away. So it's the same with galaxies. They're at huge distances away, which means that even if they have quite large speeds transverse to the line of sight, they actually move very slowly. But of course, we now have quite good ways of measuring even those quite small speeds. And so what they've done is they've taken a, a series of images with the Hubble Space Telescope over about five or six years, where you take one image, then you wait, and then you take another image and you identify the stars in the Andromeda galaxy, and you also identify a whole bunch of, of distant galaxies, which really will have, because they're so far away, really won't be moving. And you see sort of how the stars are moving relative to those very distant galaxies. And so that's really what they've measured, and they've actually been able to detect this proper motion. So they have made a measurement of it, but the measurement showed that actually it's very small. You can see the stars moving, but actually not at a, a very high speed. I did see a few press release images that showed you know, Andromeda looming in our night sky. Is that, is that fun or is that what's going to happen? Are we going to start seeing this? The, I, was, I was trying to figure this out because I knew you were going to ask this question. So I was trying to figure this out over lunch. And it's not obvious because actually, so one of the things that happens is that surface brightness is conserved. In other words, when a galaxy gets closer to you, although it appears bigger, the, the amount of brightness you get per kind of unit area on it doesn't change because although you're, it's getting closer, so it's actually getting brighter, it's also getting more spread out. So actually, you know, you, the, the amount that you receive from each little bit of the galaxy doesn't go up. Now, because Andromeda, at the distances it is at the moment, you can only just see with a naked eye, that means bringing it closer will make it bigger, but it actually won't make it any brighter. It'll still only just be visible to the naked eye. So I don't think it's going to be all that spectacular. It'll stretch across, you know, before it crashes into us, it'll stretch across a vast stretch of the sky, but it's not going to get any brighter, so it's not actually going to be that spectacular in the night sky. Well, so firstly, it's four billion years into the future. So you really, you know, it's, uh, don't cash in your life insurance just yet because it's really not something that's coming up in the immediate future. But actually, even when it does happen, it's probably not going to do anything terribly dramatic because you've got to remember galaxies are mostly empty space, right? The, the huge distances between the stars. And if you take one thing which is mostly empty space and crash it into something else which is mostly empty space, they basically just travel straight through each other. So very few stars will actually collide with one another. The two potentially bad things that might happen from a, if, if there were still life around at that point in the future are firstly one of the things that quite often happens when galaxies collide is that the, the black holes in the middle get kicked into active activity so the, we might turn into a quasar or some kind of active galaxy for a little while 
And if, you know, sometimes those black holes give out large amounts of gamma rays, if they were pointed in the wrong direction, that could be bad. And the other slightly related thing is that when, the, although the stars just pass straight through each other, there's gas in the Milky Way, there's gas in Andromeda, that will just smack into it. The, the, when the two come together, the gas will smack together. And one of the consequences of that is you quite often got, get big bursts of star formation. And again, star formation can give out large amounts of ultraviolet radiation. Uh, it will probably be distances away from us that's not really an issue from the sun, you know, from our, from our sort of domestic point of view. But it could really change the nature of the Milky Way, both by making it possibly an active galaxy or a galaxy which is forming lots of stars. So the finished product is just going to be one of these elliptical galaxies. It's going to be a round, fuzzy thing. So really, the disk galaxies that we have, spiral galaxies like the Milky Way and Andromeda, the reason why they have those disks is all the stars are on nice ordered orbits all going around in the same direction. And of course, when you smash these two things together, all that order gets lost. So everything ends up on much more random orbits and you end up with a big fuzzy blob or an elliptical galaxy. So the most likely outcome is that the two will merge to form a single elliptical galaxy. No, that's fine. All right, back to work. Back, yeah, yeah, afraid back to so. Back in your exams. Damn. <laughs> what, what are these exams about? This is first year special relativity and quantum mechanics. How are they all doing? Uh, variably. <laughs> some doing very well, some doing not quite so.